Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webcast this evening. My name is Brian Murray, the Director of Travel here at AAA, and I'm delighted that uh, you're spending some time with us this evening. We have a great program planned with uh, our partner CIE Tours. We're going to learn about Ireland and uh, Scotland and all those wonderful places. I'm really excited. Now, we can't go there yet, but we want to help people um, dream and plan. We are getting a lot of, uh, a lot of folks that are uh, planning their vacations for later next year um, and later this year as well. So we figured uh, we'll share some information to, to peak interest and uh, get those vacations scheduled. So um, I wanna let everyone know you're in listen only mode, but if you do have any questions during the program, feel free to type them in the question panel on your screen and we'll entertain those questions at the end of the program. Also, um, as a thank you for participating this evening, we're offering $100 per booking on any new 2021 or 2022 booking, um, and that expires on the 13th of February. So um, again, we know you can't go there now, um, and we're not, um, you know, um, suggesting that you 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 go immediately. But uh, we want to get you dreaming and planning, and we have a great um, great program with. Uh, um, Meg Allen. I'd like to introduce Meg Allen, who is our business development manager with CIE Tours, and she's going to uh, take a, take us on a trip across the pond. So, Meg, thank you for joining us, and uh, take it away. Okay, thanks, Brian. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, welcome from your own homes. I'm coming all to you from all the way from Long Island. I usually apologize for my accent, as you can tell. I don't have an Irish accent. I have a Long Island accent. You know, it's just, uh, uh, I kind of wish I did, but I don't. So anyway, I want to just take you and give you some things to think about and dream about and uh, teach you some Irish words, maybe. The first three Irish words I'd like to teach you is Cade Mil Falsha, which is on the screen here. And basically what that means is 100,000 welcomes. My next three uh, Irish words are Quorum uh, Ompa Aaron, which a lot of times people ask me what CIE stands for, and that's actually what it means in Gaelic, or what it's uh, how you say it in Gaelic. It means the National Transport Company of Ireland. We are actually owned by the Irish government, and when you're in Ireland, or if you have been there, you've seen a lot of buses going around the country or coaches, um, all with either Bus Aaron or CIE tours, and that's all part of the transport company. Even when you see school buses, the trains are all part of the same uh, system. We like to call ourselves part of the Irish Trinity of Tourism, along with Board Falcha, which is the tourist board, uh, CIE Tours, and Aer Lingus. So what makes us different, or exactly who are we? Uh, we have been offering quality value and vacations and guided tours since 1932. We are the number one tour operator in Ireland and in Britain now. The big thing I want you guys to remember here is that we do not offer optional extras. Everything is included. Our guides are amazing. They're all local. Uh, we have over 3 million happy travelers, and our satisfaction guest rating is 95%. So it's really, really high. People love traveling with us. These are our destinations that we offer. We are obviously uh, number one in Ireland, so that's our number one. We are a niche tour operator. We don't have tours all over the world. We really concentrated for many, many years in Ireland and the UK, and we just added Iceland and Italy uh, two years ago. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that too. But in the meantime, oh, I wanna also show you some really, really pretty pictures. But what we're offering this year in total is 18 tours. Uh, we call them guided vacations now, not, not escorted. Um, 18 tours to Ireland, four tours to Scotland, combination Ireland, Scotland, we offer five. We offer three tours in Britain, uh, one, sorry, two tours in Italy and two tours in Iceland. Now, because we know this is a, you know, after last year, obviously things have changed. We did cut back the tours we offered almost in half. But the ones we're offering now were always our most popular, and they are from three star to five star. Slayhead, this is beautiful Slayhead down in, in the Dingle Peninsula. Um, now I have a little map up on the right hand side on the top, if you can see. So you get an idea of where some of these amazing places are. 
up in the north. Uh, this is Dunluce Castle. If there's any Game of Thrones fans listening, I'm going to show you some of the spots where it was filmed. I'm a huge fan, so um, I've actually watched the series at, at least twice. Um, but this is an amazing ruin of a castle, and this was one of the shooting locations for Game of Thrones. This is another. Um, this is the Karakaridi Bridge. This is also up in the north. It's up by Giant's Causeway. Now, this bridge is hung every year. They take it down over the winter. I don't know how they do it, but they take it down because of the wind, and then they put it back up, and it's really a major visiting visiting area. If you did watch Game of Thrones, this was used as a scene in the um, Iron Islands when the brother threw his his uh, king brother over and, at night when it was raining and killed him. This is the amazing Adair Manor. This is uh, just south of Limerick and Shannon Airport. They actually just did a million dollars renovation the, it, this is more of a manor hotel. It's not really considered a castle, but as you can see, it's on an amazing golf course. It's in the town of Adair, which is really one of the most darling towns in all of Ireland. Um, the main street, I'm gonna show you a tour that you're actually gonna stay there for five nights. It's one of our newer tours. So I'll tell you about that main street in a minute. And this is in Wales, Castell Coach Castle. Now, people don't really think about Wales often. I have to tell you, it's an amazing destination. The Welsh people are as friendly as the Irish. They speak English. I mean, like the Irish, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to understand, but they, they're just so lovely and welcoming. And Wales, if you're into castles, Wales ha has the most intact castles for any country in Europe for its size. So this is one of the amazing castles in Wales. This is the Isle of Skye, which is in the northwest of um, Scotland. I had the real pleasure. It was one of the last trips I took a year and a half ago in, in October. And we stayed and we drove the whole island. And it is as amazing as this picture. Just absolutely gorgeous. And also the Scottish people, they're a little bit even more difficult to understand. But what amazing friendly people they are. Alcourt Castle, this is also in Scotland. Now this is situated right on Loch Ness. So when you go to visit this castle, you actually, there's a boat that takes you out on, and that's all included, by the way, we include this. So you go out on Loch Ness, of course, everybody's looking for Nessie, and you go onto the boat and you have nice little warm, you know, snacks and Irish coffees and hot chocolate. And it's a really, really fun day. It's a great visit. This is one for the bucket list. This is the military tattoo. It happens in Edinburgh Castle. It happens between about the third week of July to about the third week of August. Um, it is an amazing spectacle. It includes bagpipers, bands. Um, our seats are in the middle row and the bottom. So you have the best seats in the house. And it's a spectacular, as you also can see there's fireworks above the castle. If you have not been to Scotland and Edinburgh, it should be on your bucket list because Edinburgh is just such a lovely, it's a town really, but the castle is just amazing. I, I have a little difficulty pronouncing some of these Icelandic words, but this is one of the beautiful waterfalls that you see that we include the visit to. When you travel with us to Iceland, um, you're going to see at least three beautiful waterfalls in addition to all the other beautiful landscape. This is another great uh, area. It's um, the Black Sand Beaches. This is in a the village called Vic. And actually, this is another shooting area where they shot Game of Thrones, actually where they found the dragon glass. Now, it's interesting here because they will tell you when you visit that they do not want you standing close to where the waves, not even where the waves come in, because there's actually no land between the north of Africa and the southern part here in Iceland. And they say that these huge rogue waves can come out of nowhere and just take people away. So it's a place you have to be, it's amazing, it's beautiful, but you have to be really, really careful. This is the beautiful National Park. Also in Iceland, this is where two titanic plates uh, came together. So it's just really kind of a walking visit and it's just a kind of a barren place, but really beautiful. 
that now this is Venice. So we do include Venice in our Italy tour. And then of course, Florence is included. And of course, Rome. So I'm gonna tell you guys about that in a couple minutes. But these are the certain, the different areas in Ireland. There's different marketing areas. The Wild Atlantic Way, which is the whole west coast of Ireland, which is the blue. And then we have the Hidden Heartlands, which is the middle, which is sort of burn, not burn country, but it's it's peak country. Um, it's where they, it's where, the, it's bog country. And it's just amazing natural resources and beauty. Then you have Ireland's ancient east, which includes Dublin, Kilkenny, and Waterford, and then you have Northern Ireland. Now we all know Northern Ireland is part of the UK and that the Republic of Ireland, of course, is its own country. So we have our guided tours. Uh, it is designed for solo travelers to groups. We have, what we have done this year is our coaches are uh, 44 passenger coaches. We have taken 80% of our tours and made them 26 passengers maximum to allow for social distancing, to allow everyone to have their own seat so you won't have to sit next to anyone. It's much more comfortable. Um, we have extensive and unique itineraries from five to 16 days and hassle-free. That's really because we include everything. And by the way, we not only save you money by doing that because we purchase everything in bulk. We purchase right from the source, which is, you know, that's something that you need to know. There's no middleman. Um, but we also save time because if you go to even to Guinness or Edinburgh Castle, even in off season and you don't have a ticket, you wait two hours, three hours. It's crazy. With us, you go right to the front of the line and right inside. So you don't have to ever worry. And not to mention the extra cost of the extra tours. Um, I've had people tell me that um, when going with some of our competitors, the extra tours uh, cost them another thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. So and then we have all that included. Um, we also offer group vacations. So if you want to take your family, um, you have a group of friends you like to travel with, you can do that with us. We can either do a custom tour, uh, you can block uh, seats on a scheduled tour, or if you wanted to, you could. If you had ten people, you could pick any scheduled tour you like, and we will make that tour for you only, meaning you'll get your own small coach, your own driver with the same inclusions. It will be a little bit more expensive, but not more than 20%. So it really is really, really good value. And then we also, we also offer custom private driver. So we offer that in Ireland and in Iceland, and that we can design any way you're, you, know, you guys want. So that would be, um, uh, the independent itineraries, that would be our self-drive. So we also offer that as well. To be honest, I kind of like talk to people like, do you have to be prepared to drive there? Because honestly, the driver cannot take your eyes off the road for one second, especially on some of the smaller winding country roads. You're on the other side of the road, but the passenger too, when you see all those beautiful pictures of the Irish countryside with all those homemade stone walls, well, that's what you, you know, when you come close on the left, that's what you're going to hit. And not only that, because you're in a car, you don't see over them. So you don't really see the same view as you see when you're in a coach higher up. So, um, so that's my thing with the driving. It's not easy. But it, you know, if you want to do it, we will do that for you as well. You could do it with B and Bs, or you could do it with an upgrade to a hotel. Okay, so as I've kind of mentioned this already, the all-inclusive advantage we have all entrance fees, traditional entertainment, and when I say that, I mean, um, for example, in uh, Dublin, we uh, we use a place called Kate Carney's Cottage or the Merry Plowboys or another place called um, the Abbey Tavern, which is traditional Irish pubs with traditional Irish music and Irish, Irish menus. Now, I think the Abbey Tavern is the only place in Ireland that you're gonna find corned beef and cabbage on the menu. And that's because they know that Americans like that. But I hate to tell you, that's not an Irish meal. It's an American Irish meal, even though we all love it. Um, but you're not going to see that, so just be prepared. Um, well, we also include most meals, 
including a hot breakfast, and it's a full breakfast. Eggs prepared the way you like, um, brown pudding, sorry, white pudding, black pudding, uh, they do boil, not broiled tomatoes, beans, uh, bacon. They call it bacon. You and I would call it ham. Um, and it's a, it will keep you for most of the day without even being hungry. Um, we also include free Wi-Fi on all our coaches now, too. So it's very easy to stay in touch with home. We include all taxes and the handling of baggage. So the only things you would worry about or what you're going to pay for while you're there is lunch. And we do include some lunches and maybe a pint of Guinness or two, some shopping and the gratuities for the driver. That's really all it's going to cost you in addition to what you pay for the tour. Our, our guides are so amazing. I'm going to play you a little video next. But this gives you an idea of what our coaches look like. They're all basically new. There's none older than two years. They're all Mercedes, very comfortable coaches. And our guides are amazing. And I want to just play you this little video. Uh oh, sorry. I got to go back. Oh, sorry, guys. I might have to skip this. Here we go. My name's John Cunningham, and I've been a tour director for about eight years now. My name is Dermot Fallon, born, bred, and buttered in Ireland. My name is uh, Jerry, Jerry Glavin. Uh, my name is Eamon, and I'm from Kilkenny. What is the best part about being a tour director? Meeting the people. I've been doing this uh, for 24 years. I love the job. It's exciting and I, I really like to meet the different people. That's my favourite thing is meeting the people at the airport. I'm very passionate about my country and I can show them around and perhaps take them to see things that they wouldn't otherwise see. A lot of them we've become very good friends with and remain friends with them afterwards. What sets the tours apart? The people, the tour directors, the fact that we've grown up here. This is our country. This is what we are showing you, a lived experience. Anybody can read a guidebook and take you on a tour somewhere. But having grown up as I did in this area, I do know it inside out. I know every sheep farm and cow farm and horse farm and, and the whole of County Kerry. But we try to tailor our tours and we really want to make them unique for each group of guests that come through. Well, what I do that's uh, unique or different on my tours is I sing a lot of songs for the people. That's where you learn the history of Ireland through songs, actually. So if you want to learn the quick history of Ireland, get a songbook and learn the songs. Some Guinness was spilled from the barroom floor and the puppet was shut for the night. Out of his hole crept a wee brown mouse and sat in the pale moonlight. I like uh, reciting some limericks as well, but some are not for the TV, you know. I'm an expert at getting people involved in the tour make it their experience, make it what they want their tour to be. The best part is seeing the smiles on the people's faces at the end of the tour, knowing that I made their dream come true. So don't you love that? I love when he said born, bred, and buttered. I wish I could say with an Irish accent. So guys, we send really nice stuff to you too. When you get our package, you're going to think you got like a Christmas present. We send you a really nice backpack. We actually upgraded all this stuff about, I guess about three years ago. So we send you a really nice backpack. That little pouch in the middle inside is, is a, a poncho because we know it can rain sometimes. There's also a document holder with all kinds of information, no be before you go books, two luggage tags, and that little orange uh, box uh, sort of in the middle on the on the uh, bottom is our two adapters as well as a luggage strap. So you'll get all of that stuff before you go. Our books will answer all your questions. And of course your agent will know too, a lot of you, be able to answer a lot of your questions. By the way, the picture on the left, uh, is called Dark Hedges. That's also up in the north. That is another, um, that was a very famous uh, shoot and also in the Game of Thrones. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about Iceland. This is one of the famous lagoons. And then of course the Blue Lagoon, which we do include, but our visit goes at night, which is really kind of cool because if you go in the winter time and you want to try to see the Northern Lights, you could actually see the Northern Lights while you were in the Blue Lagoon. And we include dinner there as well. 
So this is our tour for Iceland. It is a total of six days. As you can see, we include 10 meals. So that would be five, five uh, breakfasts, um, one lunch. I know there's one lunch, it's at a place, it's actually a tomato farm in Ireland and they give you this most amazing homemade bread and tomato soup. And then we include five dinners, I'm oh, sorry, four dinners as well. We also include visits to the Golden Circle, the uh, the wilderness area, the Blue Lagoon. We include a visit to another lagoon called the Secret Lagoon, which is much smaller, but much less crowded. This is the famous Trevi Fountain. And then this, these are our tours to Italy. So we have two choices. The first one is six nights and it's Venice, Florence, Rome. Um, we do we do include four star hotels here, all very, very well located. And then we also include wine tasting, Doge's Palace, Michelangelo's, the Colosseum, Pompeii. Well, okay, well, this picture here shows you Sorrento, and that's the second option. So you can extend into Sorrento for three nights, and you'll also visit Pompeii and the Isle of Capri. So why choose a custom private driver? Because we can personalize anything. Now, a lot of you may think that this is very expensive. And I have to tell you, it doesn't have to be because there are three and a half, four star castles and manor hotels that are just as beautiful. They will give you the castle experience without the five star castle price of Ashford Castle or Dromolin Castle or even Adair Manor, which is the, the picture I showed you at the beginning. Um, I always say if with any realistic budget, we could work it out. Like we could do maybe a three star with a castle stay. And I have to tell you personally, three star hotels, especially in Ireland, are not like three stars here in the States. They happen to be some of my favorites because they are Irish owned, Irish staffed, and you have the granny, you know, delivering you tea in the morning. I mean, it's just a wonderful experience. Like you really feel like where you are. <clears throat> um, okay, so we have 17 preset Ireland itineraries. Now, the interesting thing about this, you may be hesitant to travel on a coach. We all understand that. So actually, all of our coach itineraries are available to drive. You can even follow the coach if you want to. But we will preset everything for you, and you could drive. And you could kind of go at your own pace and you'll have the same inclusions. So, and all of our cars in Clemwood, our, our car rentals, we work with Hertz. They all come with GPS navigation, which is a big deal and also collision damage waiver. So it is an option. It is an option. You just have to be prepared. It's not easy to drive. This is Cove. This is down in the South. Cove is actually a really interesting uh, waterfront town. It was actually the last stop of the Titanic. Um, the White Star Line still has, it's still, it's actually a museum now. Uh, it still has, the building is still there where the people waited. The first class passengers waited upstairs. The steerage passengers waited, waited downstairs. And they'll actually tell you a story. There was a young steward, he was Irish. He was from here that, that was part of the crew. And he got on the Titanic. It was actually built in Northern Ireland. Uh, but it went over to England to pick up the passengers, and he was a steward. And when they arrived in Cove, he had a very bad feeling about the, the journey. So when they brought passengers out and they brought boats out with mail, he actually got off the ship and got into the mail, the boat with the mail, and went back and got off, and he obviously survived. So this is a really, I love Cove. It's just a very, very interesting visit. This is the Dingo Peninsula which is absolutely one of my favorites. If you have been to Ireland, you've probably been to Killarney. Um, a lot of people hear about it. I love Killarney too, but I love Dingle. It's not far from Killarney. It's about 45 minutes. It's another peninsula. It has got an interesting drive, just like the Ring of Kerry, but people don't really think of it that way. So they don't put it on their bucket list. And I have to tell you, you should because it is incredible. The coastline is amazing. Um, I was in Dingle with family and friends about, oh gosh, about five years ago. And we went to a farm located right on the Atlantic Ocean that had the old, they call them beehives where the monks used to live. So there was probably 30 of them on this farm. And 
um, you gave the woman in the house who owned the land two pounds or two euros to go and visit. But while we were driving there, uh, our driver told us that her son, uh, sorry, her son-in-law was a New York City fireman. So when we got out of the co the, co the coach, myself and one of the other guy who happened to be a retired fireman went over to talk to the lady. And um, so she, she so we said, oh, we understand your son-in-law is a fireman. She says, yes, they live in New High Park. And I live in Flora Park, which is the next town over. And um, so I said, really? I go, I live in Flora Park. And she said, oh, my daughter takes care of an elderly couple in Flora Park. And I said, really who? And they, she said, Mr. and Mrs. Wells. Well, it turns out that Mr. and Mrs. Wells are very good friends of my parents. So I wanted to just tell you that little small world story. Dingle is just an amazing place. So this is the tour I was telling you about that included Adair. Now, it doesn't include a stay in Adair Manor. I hate to disappoint you. But we do use a four-store hotel right smack in the middle of this town. Adair, you could drive around Ireland and everybody's always looking for a thatch roof cottage because they are unfortunately getting less and less. But it happens to be in this town, along Main Street, there's at least four of them right on the Main Street. And it's a lovely little village. You can go, you stay, you walk out at night, you can find a pub with music. It's absolutely amazing. And the nice part about this tour is that you don't pack and unpack. You're just going to leave your bags there for five days and you're going to tour from there. And you could do a lot, as you can see. You're going to go to Dingo. You're going to go to Killarney and do part of the Ring of Kerry. You're going to go to Blarney if you want to kiss the Blarney Stone. And you're going to go to Cove, which is the, it's it's spelled C-O-B-H. You pronounce it Cove, which is what I just told you about. And then you're going to go up to Doolin and go see the Cliffs of Moore. You're going to drive through an area called the Burren, which is like, it's like Moonscape. I know when you're thinking of Ireland and driving around Ireland, you, all you think of is those beautiful green fields and the mountains and the rolling hills. And the barn is like just no vegetation, well, some vegetation, but no grass, no mountains, just moonscape. So kind of interesting area. And you actually go to Dublin for the day. So you're not in the coach longer than 90 minutes and they will stop. There's always a bathroom stop or, you know, just a stretch your leg stop too. This is beautiful, amazing London, which we do include. And then of course, Stonehenge. You know, I went to Stonehenge for the first time about two years ago. I couldn't believe we drove up on the highway and there it was right next to the highway. But of course you had to go past it and then go to the parking area and then take a, a van back there. But still, I was just amazed that it just appeared, it seemed like out of nowhere. And we also have the same in London. We have the London day trip. You stay in London for five nights. You unpack once. You're going to go see the Roman baths. You're going to go to Shakespeare's birthplace, the Canterbury Cathedral, Windsor, Windsor Castle, and Stonehenge. And notice, guys, what's included. Like, you're going to be there six days, and you have eight meals included. So we do, as I said, include everything. Now, this is the amazing Giant's Causeway. There are 34 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Ireland, and this is one of them. And the story goes, there was a giant here called Finn McCool. And there was another giant in Scotland. And apparently the giant in Scotland, I can't remember his name, but he came over in the middle of the night and he stole Finn McCool's wife. So the story goes that Finn McCool built Giant's Causeway as a bridge to Scotland to go get his wife back. The Titanic Belfast, as I mentioned before, the Titanic was built in Northern Ireland in Belfast. This is the number one visit in Ireland. It's amazing. That inset shot up to the uh, upper left is actually a recreation of the inside lobby of the ship. And this is on a huge lot here. Another Game of Thrones tidbit that the Game of Thrones lot where they filmed a lot of it when they weren't on, uh, you know, on scene or on, on uh, where, you know, in specific on location, I should say. Um, they filmed a lot there. You can't see it from the Titanic because it's so large. And I think they're going to be opening a museum there. So I'm sure that's going to be another interesting stop. But again, we include the Titanic, all front of line access. You don't have to wait online. And this is a wonderful visit. People love it. Okay, we all talked about, the, everybody knows about the Cliffs of Moher. Now, I wish, guys, I could tell you that the weather is like this all the time. But as we know, it's not. You could actually go and see this on, on boat too, but it's much more 
magnificent when you see it from the top. Now, should you go there and it's foggy or windy or rainy, there is a pretty cool visitor center that's actually built into the rock here. And they do have a 3D movie experience that will kind of give you the experience of being there, of being on the cliffs, if you don't want to go out in the rain. So it's a nice option. Okay, so the Ring of Kerry, another beautiful, I mean, the Ring of Kerry is beautiful, but again, I kind of like, want to suggest to you that you really do the Ring in Derry, I mean, sorry, in um, uh, Dingo, because it's just a, so, it's so, uh, the coastline and the, and the, the, the against the rock is amazing. So I kind of talked about this a little bit too. So we have group travel options. We have the shared group, which means that you could take 10 seats on a scheduled tour. We have private group, which will take the same tour and give you your own private coach and driver. Or we can create custom, say your last name is Murray, like Brian, and you want to go and explore your roots. Um, we can help you with that, but you'd have to kind of do some homework with ancestry and so on. Uh, but we could build an itinerary around going to, to go to the local cemetery and have a, a drink at the local pub where your ancestors had one. The Scottish Highlands, another famous, uh, this is uh, another famous uh, television series called Outlander. And um, if you haven't seen it, I recommend, especially on some of these cold nights or as we continue with our current quarantine, if you want to binge watch, it's a great show. And that was the first season, especially, was filmed in, in Scotland. This is a gr another amazing castle in the northwest of Scotland. This is another, um, this is actually where they filmed some of Outlander too. It's called the Eileen Donan Castle. And if there's golfers listening, this is the famous St. Andrews. Now there's nine courses here. This course is the old course. This is the one everybody wants to play. And I, I'm not a golfer, my husband is, but um, there's a new, there's also another course called the new course which is over 100 years old. But on the side of this course, there is a nine hole putt course, which I actually played. So I can say to you guys that I have actually played at St. Andrews. But you know, it's very hard to get on the old course, but I can tell you that there is like infinite number of courses in this area and all over Scotland. This is Carnarfon Castle, which is in Wales. This castle is absolutely amazing. If you take the ferry from uh dublin which you can to this area you will come into around this area but this is another one of the main beautiful intact castles that i was telling you about in wales this is a name of a town in wales if you can believe it and on the next slide i could tell you what it means and i know when we were there they could pronounce that if you could imagine but it's it means the church of mary in the hollow of the white hazel near the fierce whirlpool and the church of Tassilio by the Red Cave. Don't ask me what it means, but um, it's just very interesting. And did you also know that most people with the surname Jones have Welsh, uh, uh, they're, they're, they part Welsh, like uh, Captain Zeta Jones is Welsh, Tom Jones was Welsh. We go off for you guys now, we finally came out with a past guest incentive. So if you travel with us, we give you $150 that you could use towards a future trip. It's good for 12 months and you can use it with our current specials. So our safety precautions, our coaches will be sanitized often, um, including regular cleaning, touch up area surfaces with disinfectant wipes. 100% of the airflow will come from outside the fresh air. We will stop frequently for hand washing and we will have hand sanitizer available at all times. And then as far as the hotels go, they all have their own protocol, but basically the rooms will completely be disinfected and cleaned between stays. When visiting attractions, all proper safety measures will be adhered to, social distancing will be adhered to. So there's no reason to be uh, you know, be concerned. So these are our specials tonight, guys. We're offering 10% on the land only price if you give it a deposit within 10 days. I know Brian already talked about the $100. Now, in addition to the $100 that AAA is going to give you, there's another $25 off per person that is just because you're a member 
uh, booking through AAA and going with CIE tours. And then we have the past group discount. Now, in addition to the to the 10%, there is a two for one air special, but I have to tell you, they cannot be combined. Um, the two for one air special is only good until February 12th. And then we have four Irish tours that have 15% off. So I wanted to let you know all your options. And I have a little video. I will return in two hours. Gently into the phone. To see the waters and the hills and all the beautiful sea bubbles. To feel the earth beneath my feet. The warmth against my face. And be welcomed in her To her kind embrace. But alas, for now, I'll have to wait to see my true love's form. But we all know that these green lands weather tougher storms. The wandering lanes and rugged cliff, their fields laced with streams, will still be there where I awake. But for now, they're in my dreams. Thank you all so much for listening. I just want to point out something in that video. Um, if you saw there was a, uh, there, it looked like cliffs and there, there was a lady that stepped onto a wooden, a wooden fence. Those are called Sleeve Lee Cliffs and those are up in the Northwest, up in Donegal. We include them on our tours. People don't know about them. They're actually the highest, they're way higher than the Cliffs of Moore and they're the highest cliffs in all of Europe. So if you, if you're interested in something like that, just look for our tours that go up to the North, Northwest, Donegal, and you'll find some that, that included that as well. So now I would like to open it up for questions. Well, Meg, thank you. What a great program. I am, as you know, I was supposed to go last May and did not get there. So uh, it's it's on the docket for later this year. So I'm very excited and uh, you re, uh, reignited my excitement. Um, oh, good. That was my purpose. Well, it, it worked for me. So um, there are a couple, um, couple questions. Actually, there is a, a comment that... Uh, uh, Cheryl had made, and she said she just wanted to share her experience with CIE in Ireland. Mert O'Shea was the absolute best tour guide, and she made best friends on the um, on one of your trips three years ago. So you you, you showed that little video about the tour guides, and it was so um, so special. And she wanted to share um, <clears throat> that it was that special, actually. So uh, thank you, um, Cheryl. You know, I hear stories like that all the time. It's funny because, you know, they don't offer, we don't really operate tours like between late November until maybe early, like mid February. So all the drivers, like not all, but many of the drivers come over to the States and a lot of them go to like warm. They just want to go warm and sun. And um, so they make, they make a lot of friends on these tours and they come over here every year and come over and see all their friends. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Ch Cheryl loved it. So I wanted to mention that. Um, I do have a question um, about golfing. You mentioned golf. Is there usually enough time to play golf on one of the guided tours? Yes. And this is what you have to do. You pick a tour that stays in a place is more than one night. So you have to take a tour that say you have to be in a place two nights because the second day, so the so the first day you're you're traveling right you get to your hotel and the next day um the tour that you have a tour included but whoever wants to golf you just don't go on the tour you just tell the driver he'll arrange it for you too or the hotel will arrange it for you they'll get you uh transportation there um and you could go and play golf and it's kind of nice like i don't golf but my husband does so i would go on the tour and he could go golf so everybody's happy Perfect. That works really well. And uh, as as we all know, everyone needs to be happy. So that's great. Um, yes. I, I have to tell you, I uh, uh, appreciate the, the program. It looks wonderful. I can't wait to get back there. And uh, um, I'm sure that uh, uh, hopefully you've piqued some interest. And I would like to say to anybody, if um, you do have additional questions, uh, feel free to give us a call. Our travel consultants know the product well. They've been um, there are many times, and uh, we really want to help you all um, plan that uh, that vacation. You know, early or this week, Tuesday was National Plan for Vacation Day, and 33% uh, uh, people gave up 33% of their vacation time uh, last year. 
and typically that's year after year. So there's National Plan for Vacation Day, um, which really says, you know what, get the calendar out, look through the rest of the year and plan a vacation and uh, take time away from work. Um, we come back refreshed and uh, um, it's just overall healthy. So um, I will encourage everyone to uh, get that calendar out and uh, look for later this year to plan that vacation. But thank yeah, you all for me, being here. Me, yeah. Right, let me just interject one sec. I just want to say, I know we've all been, you know, cooped up for quite a long time and um, you might still be a little bit hesitant. But um, I, if I if, if you're interested, I would look at like maybe late summer and, and fall. So I, I honestly believe it's going to be absolutely fine to travel. We'll all get our vaccines by then. And I know that I know I know Brian's yearning to go. I'm yearning to go. And I hope you all are, too, because, you know, I think if it's this year has taught us anything, it's like you say to yourself, why wait? Just do it. Absolutely. Well said. So, well, thank you, Meg. Thank you all for uh, being here and um, have a great evening. Keep warm. Thank you again. And whoever was on last time where we couldn't, we couldn't show this. Thank you so much for coming back and spending the last 45 minutes with us. We appreciate it. Agreed. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh.